All right, hello and welcome to today's video where I'm going to be talking about why there is no ultimate there, but there are a million little there's that matter, that are important, and why we want to live our lives for the little there's and, and how we can learn to find satisfaction and happiness and joy in the little there's and as we kind of let go of the idea that there's an ultimate there that's going to make our lives perfect. Okay, so what do I mean by ultimate there and what do I mean by little there? And and again, the reason that I'm making this video and I want to talk about this is because in the spirituality and the self-help and the personal growth worlds, a lot of the time, not all the time, but a lot of the time, I see that the message is either the that, again, that there's some sort of transcendence that we can get to in this life where if we do all the self-help or the spirituality or the healing or the whatever work that we're doing, if we do it perfectly and if we do it long enough, we will get to this place where, again, we reach some sort of level of perfection where pain no longer exists, where struggle no longer exists, and where we will transcend everything that's terrible and that we can step into this life that's like perfect for us. And we can get our perfect relationships, we can get our perfect career, we can get our perfect body, and then forever and ever and ever after that, we're just in heaven and life is perfect. And a lot of our social media influencers especially and people on the internet and people who are selling us programs and books and seminars and healing modalities are all promising this promise and they are making it look like they have that, right? They're making it look like I found my person and now everything is perfect or I did this diet or I did this pro protocol and now my body functions perfectly and every day I wake up and I'm just in this perfect blissed out physical state, right? Or I did all the spiritual self-help, personal growth work and now again I wake up every day and I'm joyful and everything is amazing and I have this bliss and this understanding of God or this understanding of the universe or whatever it is and I never have a negative emotion and I never have a negative thought. And and why, again, that is so wrong and not in alignment with reality and sets people up to be very disappointed in the results that they're getting in life. It sets people up to blame and shame themselves and it sets people up to, to believe that they are doing something wrong if they're not experiencing this perfect bliss and this perfect whatever and it leads people to being repeat customers of these people who are selling these protocols where you're going to have the perfect relationship, you're going to have the perfect body, you're going to have the perfect mindset and you're going to be able to create your dream life and it sets us up to be repeat customers of these people selling us these programs that are possibly helpful to some degree but again lying when they tell us that perfection is possible because we believe that they are telling us that perfection is possible and therefore when we're not per achieving perfection we don't go oh it must be that the program is wrong oh it must be that they were lying that perfection is possible oh it must be them we look at them and we think, well, they're experiencing perfection. They're saying I should be experiencing perfection and therefore it must be me. I must be the one who's failing. I must be the one who's doing it wrong. And therefore I should invest more money and more time and more energy into these people and their programs and what they have to offer because them failing to deliver on their promise has become our problem instead of us understanding that it was them failing to deliver on their promise, yeah? And this makes people really rich in the self-help, spirituality, personal growth world. There are a lot of people out there who are selling shit that doesn't work for anyone. 
right? Or they sell things that, again, in the beginning, it feels really exciting and it feels really new and it stimulates us in just the right ways. Where when we get on a new protocol or we do some new thing, all of us get that hit of, I'm doing it. I'm changing my life. Things are getting better. We all have the capacity to have cognitive bias that when we're doing a program or we're experiencing something that we look to see that it's working and we ignore the things that aren't working because we need to believe it's working. We want to believe it's working. And so we're doing that. And so it appears like we're getting results and therefore we believe in our minds that the program is working, that the program works, the things they're telling us work. It feeds into what we want to believe about ourselves and what we want to believe about reality, right? Like when the self-help guru and the spirituality guru tell you, it's all inside of you, that everything that you want and everything that you could need is inside of you somewhere, that if you just do the right things, you will get there that you are completely in control of your emotions, you are completely in control of your body, you are completely in control of your vibration, which therefore means you're completely in control of your outcomes of your life, right? We want to believe that. So when the self-help, self-love, personal growth gurus tell us these things and then say, now here are the tools to perfect your body or perfect your vibration or perfect your mind or whatever, again, it stimulates us It makes us feel excited. It makes us feel like we get that hit of dopamine because it's something new, it's something different. We're changing from what we were doing before, which always stimulates us. And we're, again, we're convinced that to a degree it works. And possibly, again, there could be elements of these things that do work, like little elements of them that really do make our lives better. But then again, when we don't achieve the perfection, when we don't get to exactly where we want to go, when the whole body doesn't heal, when we don't manifest the partner of our dreams or our relationship stays being kind of shitty or we can't find the perfect job or we still have mental, emotional pain and trauma and things we're going through and these things, like I say, don't fix us, we then turn around and say, it must be that I did it wrong. It must be that I'm failing. Because it can't be that this person is lying. It can't be that the program is not as complete as I thought it was. Because again, they're telling me that it is. And they're showing me that it is. Because they have customer testimonials and they have their own story and they're constantly being able to curate an image that they have perfect transcendence, that their life is incomplete, completely in their control, that they healed their issue and now everything is perfect. And again, because we're so susceptible to wanting to hear that message, that we believe them. And we believe them even as our own experience shows us that what they're saying isn't true. And then we doubt ourselves instead of doubting them. And then we reinvest our money and our time and our energy in their programs and their services thinking I'm gonna get there eventually we're gonna get there eventually this person has it this is true and it's just me that's not doing it right I'm not doing it enough I don't have enough support I need to do it again I need to go to the next workshop I need to go to the next level up thing I need to do the next retreat I need to meditate more blah 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 Yes, and we waste our entire lives. We can waste so much of our lives chasing a perfection that is never going to exist, that nobody has. And even to understand that there might be people out there who are having a pretty great experience, like they're having a pretty transcendent experience in their body and they're having a great experience in their relationship and all these things. And we're not understanding that we might not have the foundations that they had. We don't have the conditions that they have. We don't have the environment that they have. That a lot of what makes our lives amazing or terrible, 
again, aren't things that we control. The bodies that we're born into, the families we're born into, the trauma we receive when we're children, the the country we're born into, the governments that we're born into, the education systems we're born into, like natural disasters are what kind of access do you have in life? What kind of education did you get? All of these things have such a massive impact on our experience. And yet we're being told that our experience is 100% controlled by us. And so again, someone who is like doing certain actions and those actions are improving their experience. They might not be lying, but it still might not work for you if you don't have those same foundations or you don't have the same conditions and everything else in your life, right? Like for me to sit here and say, these are all the things that I did to try to help to heal my nervous system from my trauma and to say, therefore it can work for everybody would be a lie because not everyone has my circumstances. Not everyone has the safety that I have. Not everyone has the, the financial security that I have. So yeah, these nervous system programs that I've used and these things that I've done have helped me, but that doesn't necessarily mean that they are the one thing that made everything in my life better and that no matter what circumstances or conditions anyone else is in, these things are gonna give them the exact same results that I got. Because that's impossible. No one is ever gonna get the exact same results from what I did as what I did, unless they have the exact same conditions as me. So when we're living our lives, looking for this perfect after, and we're being sold, this is how you get it. And look, it worked for me, it look, worked for my other clients, blah, 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 blah. And it doesn't work for us. And we then doubt ourselves. We blame ourselves. We say the reason that didn't work is because of me. Because I'm being told that it is possible to completely transcend. It is possible to have perfect outcome to have the big there, the big arrival. We are constantly going to be trapped, like I say, in not taking little steps that really are going to make our lives better. We're going to be distracted from better. We're going to be distracted from the things, like I say, that could actually make our lives better. We're going to be distracted from the things and the steps that we can take that would actually help us get to where we want to go. Yes, we're going to be in shame and blame and guilt of ourselves, constantly thinking we're doing something wrong or we're failing or we're not doing it enough and that's why it's not working, which isn't helpful. <laughs> and usually, what this is eventually going to lead to is us giving up, is us losing hope, is us getting completely, you know, black pilled on the idea that we can make our lives better or that anything is worth it. And we can end up in this place where we're hopeless and we feel like nothing matters because we were told that transcendence was possible and we tried really hard and we did everything we could do and it didn't work. And then instead of being able to see that, okay, maybe perfect transcendence isn't possible, but better is possible, a little bit better is possible, progress is possible, happiness along the way is possible, instead of being able to see that, we just see, well, if I can't have the perfect thing, I may as well give up. I may as well not even try because there's only suffering the way that I'm suffering now or perfect transcendence. And that sucks. <laughs> when we live these lives where we're chasing perfect, a perfect that doesn't exist and that cannot exist, 
it means we are setting ourselves up for constant disappointment and constant pain and constant feeling of not enough because then we're not learning how to appreciate that improvement is possible, that better is possible, that one step at a time is possible, that even though we can't fix it all, that doesn't mean we can't make it better. Okay, so this looking for the perfect transcendence is what I believe to be one of the most common sources of pain and suffering that human beings have. But, like I say, the flip side is just as painful. When we believe that there's no there, there's no ultimate goal, there's no ultimate thing, everything is just a soup of one big experience. When we are not able to appreciate that there are little things we do want to work towards, that there are goals and there are healing moments and there are things that are going to happen in our lives that really do permanently alter our experience, that really do change the way we feel or change the way that we interact with our reality or that change our reality pretty significantly. When we're saying, I'm not going to work towards any of that. I'm not going to go for anything. I'm not going to place my happiness on any external circumstance because I know it's all just fleeting and none of it matters. We equally set ourselves up to suffer. That sometimes that idea that there is no there, there. There is no there, there. There is no ultimate, there's no arrival. It's all just one long journey and therefore just appreciate the thing for what it is or be in every moment or appreciate everything that's happening to you. Again, that sounds so transcended, right? That sounds so wise and that sounds so like the truth a lot of the time. But again, in real reality, we are humans who are always going to be seeking better. This is just, again, a part of the biology we were handed. As the ancestors that survived, everyone who came before us that were able to pass down their genes were the ones that continued to seek better. We have come from a long line of humans who have constantly sought to improve things, to, to understand life deeper, to make better systems, to make better programs, to understand the physical body better than we ever have, to understand human psychology, to understand weather, to understand nature. And this constant pursuit of better is the reason why any of us have any kind of good lives right now. This constant pursuit of growth and change and evolution is incredibly important to the human race and to each individual. You may have heard um, other self-help experts talk about the fact that humans have an innate need for novelty. That we literally just need things to be different every once in a while. To just be different. And again, we can understand where that came from. That came from that huge line of our ancestors who didn't just sit in what we knew, who didn't just stick with what was already happening. They continued to fight and look and s seek out better, more understanding, better systems, all of these things. And that continual moving forward 
we owe so much of our life to that. And within our own individual experience, we must understand that we are never going to transcend the attachment to the outcomes of our lives. I want to say that again. We are never going to transcend the attachment to the outcomes of our lives. Because we are always going to have to feel and experience the outcomes of our lives. And the outcomes of our lives are always going to give us either pleasure or pain. And if we can understand that as human beings, we continually seek pleasure, because in real reality, if we were only re interacting with real reality, just straight up one-to-one -one cause and effect, and if we were like subtle enough in our awareness of pain and pleasure that we could understand that everything that makes us feel good makes us feel good because on some level it's life generating or it's mimicking something that's life generating and everything that feels bad on some level is harmful or it's mimicking something that's harmful. And if we can understand that again, right? In our childhoods, we learned the way to survive is to be loved and approved of because then the people around us provide for us. So it got wired into our system that to be loved and approved of is to survive, is to get our needs met. We're not consciously aware of that. Right? We're not thinking, when I get 400 likes on Instagram, I get food now. Because that's not what's really happening anymore. But we get a hit as though those 400 likes release the chemicals in our body that make us feel like I'm going to get my needs met. When we get 100 comments that tell us we're ugly and stupid and no one likes us, even though that could have literally no effect on our actual reality, our brains and our bodies read, I'm in danger now. Because the first program we got, programmed into our nervous system, was that approval equals someone meeting your needs. Rejection equals not getting your needs met. So you see, we follow all these things that feel good, and then maybe in real reality, aren't actually keeping us alive, aren't actually good for us. But we do it because somewhere in our biology, we believe, not necessarily consciously, but subconsciously, that this is the best thing. It's mimicking survival. So like I said, we chase pleasure and we run from pain because we're humans that want to survive. And pleasure is supposed to mean, this is helping me survive. And pain is supposed to mean, this is dangerous for my survival. So if we were to become fully detached from our pain and pleasure, if our ancestors had done that, humanity would have gone extinct. Because it was through following what felt good and running away from what felt bad that all of our ancestors survived. When they didn't have any understanding of how things worked, all that native wisdom we talk about was coming from either observing reality for how it actually was, or it was following what felt good and running from what felt bad. That's how we survived. That's how we got here. It's not hedonism. It's not some evil thing in us. That's our survival instinct. So to think that we would even want to get to a place 
where we are not attached to things being painful or things being pleasurable, which is the outcome of our experience, is silly. We're never going to get there. This doesn't mean we have to be completely driven by the momentary pleasure and running from momentary pain because again, like I said, it's not so simple in the world that we live in now. Pain and pleasure is often complex in that we do things that have elements of pleasure and elements of pain. We do things that, you know, numb certain pain but then cause their own pain. So there's positive in it, but there's also negative. We have certain things that meet a certain need on some level, but we don't know how to get that need met in like a really pure, clean way. And so it's causing some, some sort of destruction on another level. And we have to learn how to, <clears throat> how to discern what's the benefit of what I'm doing from the negative and how can I increase the benefit and decrease the negative? Understanding that again, sometimes our pain and pleasure signals are totally wrapped up in what gives us approval or what gets us rejected. So we can't see clearly if something is actually good for us or bad for us. We live in a reality where consensus reality does affect us. Where sometimes doing the thing that would be like ultimately good for us in real reality does get us rejected and that rejection is worse because humans are tipping the scale. You see what I'm saying? There's a lot of complexity here. But to say that we want to transcend feeling what we feeling what we're feeling and and, and attachment to outcome so that we just enjoy everything as the journey is equally not reality. Right? Any spiritual teacher that's telling you that you should be able to have joy at all times is lying to you. You shouldn't be able to have joy at all times and you wouldn't want to be able to have joy at all times. In the sense that you wouldn't want to be in a state where you see things that are damaging to you and harmful or abusive as good. Because again, when we, there's a, we can see it as, okay, maybe there's something for me to learn here in the sense that I'm being abused. Why do I think that that's okay? Where did I learn that that was something that was acceptable? Where do I have some power to make this better? But to expect you to look at it as a blessing or something that is good for you or it happened for some higher reason, you don't have to do that. And again, to get to a place where, we th where we're happy about the things that are hurting us, I don't believe that that's actually a spiritual understanding. That's trying to override our pain and pleasure signals that are there to help us build better lives. When we try to make ourselves happy in a situation where we're not happy, we're denying reality. When we try to make ourselves feel safe or loved or like things are okay in situations where we're not safe and things are not actually okay, that's not a spiritual transcendent thing to do. That's denial of reality. So again, without our pain and pleasure signals, without our pain and pleasure signals, we cannot do the work we need to do to get ourselves out of situations that are degrading for us and to get ourselves into situations that are better for us. Pain and pleasure is always going to be the thing that motivates us. And so we don't want to transcend pain and pleasure. We don't want to get rid of pain and pleasure. We don't want to get to a place where we ignore pain and pleasure. 
Rather, we do want to get to a place where we can understand our pain and pleasure, where we can understand what the pain and pleasure signals are telling us. Because again, sometimes the situation that we're in isn't the thing that's actually hurting us. It's our perception of the situation that we're in. As in, we can be in a relationship and we can be perceiving that someone is rejecting us or not loving us or abusing us in some way, when in reality, it's how we're perceiving their actions. It's, it's the meaning we're making out of what they're doing that isn't in alignment with what it actually means or what they're actually doing that's causing us pain. And the vice versa can be true. We can convince ourselves that a situation is good for us and that there's goodness in it and that there's pleasure in it even when it's ultimately destructive. So when we start to understand that, again, we can see we don't want to get rid of pain and pleasure. We don't want to transcend our reaction and our response to pain and pleasure. Rather, we want to start to learn how to learn from pain and pleasure, how to question our thoughts, how to question what is actually helpful in this and what is harmful. We want to learn how to see our own innocence so deeply that we never doubt again that everything that we're doing has a positive intention. Everything that we do, everything that we are, we are doing because we are trying our best to survive the best way we know how, with the programs we were given, with the, with the conditions we were raised in, and the conditions we're currently in. The mishmash of consensus reality we were handed, our biology, our chemistry, our circumstances. <clears throat> there is no evil and there is no good. We're all just doing the best we can with what we know. And so life, again, is not about reaching perfect transcendence. We're never going to get to a place. We're never going to get to a place where there's no pain ever again. <clears throat> because life is always happening. Life is always changing. No matter what we achieve, no matter where we get to, no matter what happens, at some point it's going to change. At some point, some other area of our life, there's going to, something is going to come up that we can't predict. At some point, our desire for what is fulfilling for us and what is meaningful for us and what we want to be doing in this life is going to change. And when we can understand that, yeah, we can understand there's no transcendence and there's no getting there. But we can balance that understanding. We can balance that understanding with the awareness that it does matter what we do on a day-to-day -day basis. That it does matter that we pursue the things that are important to us right now. That it does matter that we look at the pain that we're in and we look to where we can improve our conditions so that we don't have to be in that pain anymore. That it does matter when we have goals and we have dreams and we have desires that we know are not going to make our lives perfect but that matter on our way that's when we can start to live a meaningful life so we're not chasing perfection because we know that's never going to exist but we're not giving up on chasing the things that really matter to us and we're not giving up on changing the things that are painful right now. We're not stepping into a place where we say, okay, well, if I'm in pain, 
It's my attachment to outcome. And I just need to learn to be okay with what is. And I just need to accept reality for how it is. And all of these things. When reality is actually just abusive or toxic or damaging in some way, and there's something we can do about it, to, to tell ourselves to sp be spiritually gaslit into thinking that a desire for change or a desire for growth when we're in pain is spiritual immaturity right that that could not be farther from the truth that could not be farther from the truth or to be told that you can be happy anywhere you can be satisfied anywhere it's all the same achieve the thing don't achieve the thing it doesn't matter that is also a lie that is also a lie because you're here and you're alive and you have biology and you have certain things about yourself that you want to express you have things that matter to you you have desires and you have wishes and maybe we can't explain why all of that exists or how all of that came to be but we can absolutely say that so long as you're alive so long as you're here you have time and you are going to feel more fulfilled maybe not ultimately fulfilled you are going to feel better maybe not ultimate amazing if you pursue the things that matter to you if you pursue better than you would if you just tried to force yourself to be okay with things that you're not okay with or to force yourself to not have goals and not have dreams and try to see everything as just the same you are going to have a better life following what matters to you and looking to improve what you can improve even if you can't make it perfect you're going to have a better life doing that than the alternative of trying to make yourself happy in a place where you're not happy or living a life where you don't pursue what matters to you and the ultimate truth again is that oftentimes in this life pursuing what matters to us is hard pursuing what matters to us is not easy pursuing our dreams pursuing improvement in our relationships improvement in our bodies improvement in any area of our life it requires effort it requires going through the unknown it requires facing fears it requires being rejected and abandoned a lot of the time it requires going places we've never been before and doing things we've never done before and therefore being insecure it's usually going to involve negative emotions and disappointment and not getting what we want and the path being something completely other than what we thought it was going to be and that's hard and that's scary and it's uncomfortable and it's painful sometimes but again it's usually better than trying to be okay with what we're not okay with than staying the same and not pursuing anything so my main point with this talk that I wanted to get across is that when we let go of the idea of ultimate transcendence and we let go of the ultimate there and we let go of the idea that we can ever get to a place where life is perfect and never hurts again and nothing ever goes wrong again we don't want to swing so far the other way that we tell ourselves that how we're feeling right now doesn't matter 
that we tell ourselves that the goals and the dreams and the things we want to pursue in life don't matter and that they aren't going to make a difference because they are. So that's the first point. You might not be able to perfectly heal your body, but better is better. You may not be able to create the perfect relationship, but better is better. You may realize that every goal you achieve, there's another goal afterwards. There's something else you want. That every mountaintop you reach becomes the new base of the of the next goal. But that does not have to be a discouraging thing. That does not have to mean life doesn't have meaning. What we actually want to take from that is not stop having goals or stop chasing things because nothing is ever going to make you happy. What we want to take from that is, okay, how do I really let my achievements and the things that I do get to make me happy? That's the first thing. Because in our culture, And in our world that we live in, we live with so much manufactured discontent. And a lot of the time, it isn't even that reaching the goal or reaching the destination didn't fulfill us. It's that we weren't allowed to feel that feeling of fulfillment. We weren't allowed to really experience the celebration and the the joy of that. Because culture tells us, you have to be on to the next thing now. That was great, now now what? That's old news. Right? We never learn to celebrate ourselves. We never learn to slow down and take in the accomplishment. And to really give ourselves permission to feel the pleasure of an achieved goal. Yeah? And then the second thing is, to really allow ourselves to experience how the achieved goal has made our lives better. Because that's another big thing, is that a lot of us have made monumental progress in our lives in terms of healing or changing things. But we're constantly looking to where it's not perfect yet instead of looking at and appreciating how much better it is. So again, we don't want to get caught up in it's all, it's, we can get to perfect and then when we realize we can't, that nothing means anything. We want to appreciate what we have accomplished. We want to learn to really appreciate the progress that we have made and how it has improved our lives. We want to slow down and let go of perfect, not so that we become hopeless, but so that we then can appreciate progress. And we can step out of this continual manufactured discontent that tells us that if it's not perfect, it's not good at all. We have to learn to appreciate better and good. Okay, and then, like I say, at the same time, we have to appreciate that we are not designed to be happy anywhere at any time. That pain exists for a reason. That desire to become something more than we are already exists for a reason and we are never going to transcend that and we would not want to transcend that like I said because pain is there to let us know when things are out of alignment pain is there to let us know when we are being hurt in some way pain is there to stop us from continuing down a path that isn't working for us. And again, that's complex. Sometimes that's intellectual. Sometimes that's trauma. Sometimes that's our perception. Sometimes that's real 
what's actually happening and we have to question the conditioning we were given and what we perceive as normal and that's scary and hard and confusing but we want to pursue better otherwise we do just get stuck in pain and there's no amount of trying to convince ourselves that we're not in pain that is going to actually make us not in pain there's no amount of spiritual backbendery that can make us feel good in a situation where we don't feel good and so we want to look for why we don't feel good and what we need to feel better and again what little improvements we can make because that's part of being alive and so then yes there are going to be times and places where we do have to just accept that which we cannot change that there are some things we can't improve that it's not our fault and we grieve that and we learn the emotional catharsis process of being with those things and there are some things where we can learn to be happy in what is because the thing that was hurting us about it was our perception of it so like I say this is comp complicated and complex but that's what we actually want to do we want to investigate we want to learn we want to go deeper into what's actually happening and understanding that to pursue pleasure is not wrong and in fact it's the only thing it's the main thing that allowed our ancestors to survive it's a good thing but we want to understand our pleasure and we want to understand our pain and we want to get deeper awareness of these things through investigation and curiosity okay so when we let go of the idea of the ultimate there we're doing so with the awareness that so long as we're alive we're gonna have desire so long as we're alive we're gonna wanna get away from the things that hurt and we're gonna wanna create the things that feel good and that that's a good thing and we wanna learn to appreciate the little there's we wanna learn to ha how to have a goal and to go for it and to understand that it's not going to be the ultimate thing but it's the next thing it's the the next right thing it's the next good thing and we want to live our lives where we can appreciate all the steps because that's how we have a happy life a happy life is not one where we arrive at perfect a happy life is one where we can enjoy the steps we enjoy the improvements we appreciate what we are doing while we're doing it we understand again right there is no perfection but we appreciate the better we appreciate ourselves when we notice that something is painful so we can question it and move forward we appreciate this life as one that is constantly changing where we're always gonna have goals and we're always gonna have dreams and we're always gonna have desire to make things better and we work with that instead of trying to transcend it okay so that's the balance there is no ultimate there but there are lots of little there's and the little there's matter so learning how to appreciate that and how to appreciate when you're in pain and appreciate when you're in pleasure and to learn deeper what that means and what you need and how to support yourself that is the key okay so that's the video if you have any questions comments concerns leave them down below and I will see you whenever I see you.